I'm Preston Manning and a member of Emanuel Church since 1966. Being asked to discuss our church and spiritual life is an honor. Jane and I were born into families that emphasized regular church attendance and uh, maintain, and we have maintained our affiliations. I was born in Columbia, South Carolina. Jane is 10 months younger than I and was from Brevard, North Carolina. Jane was Presbyterian and I am a so-called cradle Episcopalian. Our home upbringings were standard. Jumping ahead, World War II led to my being asked by the retired priest of St. John's in Columbia to be crucified at Easter. I, at age 13, refused. Older boys in the congregation were in the armed services and not able to be crucifers or attendants. My mother burst into tears. I relented. This time to more acolyte duties. I, this, this led to more acolyte duties and these led to interest in the church and the Bible. In college, I reverted to my earlier desire to be a medical doctor. This led in time to marriage for Jane and me. We subsequently lived in New York City, New Mexico, Arizona, Minnesota, and Nigeria. We moved to Stanton in 1965 and joined Emmanuel in 1966. Why such a variety of places and people? It was partly from our mutual interest to use our training to help unfortunate people and partly from my reading some works of Albert Schweitzer, an outstanding Lutheran minister, theologian, organist, professor, and medical doctor who carried his Christianity to Gabon in West Africa. Though he was famous for his theological works, his lifelong emphasis was on charitable action. A famous work of his is entitled The Quest of the Historical Jesus. In the last paragraph of it, he says, He comes to us as one unknown, without a name, as of old, by the lakeside. He came to those who knew him not. He speaks to us the same word, follow thou me and sets us to the task which he has to fulfill for our time. He commands, and to those who obey him, whether they be wise or simple, he will reveal himself in the toils, the conflicts, and the sufferings which they will pass through in his fellowship and as an ineffable mystery. They shall learn in their own experience who he is. Perhaps we were too young to know what Schweitzer meant by the toils, conflicts, and sufferings which we might expect by ultimate service to Jesus. Nigeria called us to work in a hospital jointly run by Anglicans, British Methodists, and Scottish Presbyterians. We had thought we might be there for three years, but our time ended after nine months. We returned to America and to my practice in Stanton. Medical practice can and should be directed to the health of any who are sick and suffering. To reconnect, to connect practice to Christianity, I turned to the Bible and particularly to the Gospels. The Sermon on the Mount from St. Matthew is applicable at all times for believers, and readers can hardly miss the compassion of St. Luke and the mysticism of St. John. This is not the time to speak of the Gospels except briefly. St. Mark is considered the earliest. There is no birth narrative, as is true also of the Gospel of St. John. The Gospels have sizable sections dealing with the Transfiguration, Jesus' Passion and the Crucifixion, and brief narratives of the Last Supper. 
The Gospels of St. Luke and St. Matthew are long and have many quotes from Deuteronomy, the Psalms, and Isaiah. The Gospel according to St. John is obviously different in style and emphasis from the other Gospels, known as the Synoptic Gospels. In John, Jesus from the beginning proclaims he is the Son of God and yet he is conscious of his entire future from the start of his ministry till his death. There are some narratives in St. John, including miracles, that parallel those in the synoptics. The Book of Common Prayer is a gold mine of meaningful and perfectly gorgeous prayers. Many of them have long histories of usage and are theologically comprehensive. For instance, the general thanksgiving from the service of morning prayer is a marvel for its inclusion of everything for which we should be grateful. And I quote, Our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of its life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. You probably are familiar with other remarkable prayers from our prayer book. Experience in Nigeria was unique for me. I was both a general practitioner and surgeon. Our clinic often had four to 500 patients to treat daily. There were four doctors when we arrived. Three of us carried out surgery and two gave anesthesia. We had no blood transfusions and some patients died of blood loss after major trauma. There were many patients with diseases that are rare in America, such as parasitic infestations, bites by poisonous snakes, leprosy, and human rabies. Hernia repair was our most common surgery. In an unusual patient, I repaired seven hernias through one incision. I was an intern in 1957 and was required to join one of the armed services. I joined the Indian Health Service, part of the Public Health Service, and was assigned to a Navajo hospital in New Mexico. Because I still had some surgical life left 40 years later, we found a Navajo hospital in Ganada, Arizona that needed a surgeon. Beginning in 1997, I practiced surgery there and worked until retirement in late 1999. The Nigerians are reserved and generally quiet people, and we were happy to have worked a second time with them from the end of 1999 to now, I have been fully retired. Thank you.